Hey everybody, before we get into today's very quick video, I wanted to show you a couple new toys and acquisitions that are kind of exciting. This is probably the coolest thing I've found in a while, and huge thanks to my friend Scott for um, locating it. But this was a 3D printed Moto Compacto scooter that was sold on Etsy. Uh, not that expensive. In fact, I thought it was underpriced for how cool it is. This thing has all the details, the back wheel you can see even folds in and out like the real one. The kickstand is there as well as a little placeholder to hold it upright. But um, the handlebar mechanism folds into the compartment there, the seat removed, just like the actual full-size Moto Compacto. So I gotta say, that is an incredibly cool miniature. So thanks, Scott, for finding that. Uh, the next thing is I wanted to show you guys this calendar. Oh, by the way, I have the lights in the glass case turned green today because I'm filming this on St. Patrick's Day. So I hope everybody had a good holiday weekend for that. Uh, this is a cool calendar. This is a 2024 calendar that came all the way from the Czech Republic. My friend Pavel, I um, hope I pronounce his name right, but he sends me a calendar religiously every year. He's a big time Honda enthusiast. Um, from the other side of the world. And I am especially grateful that he continues to keep me on his mailing list for these great calendars. And uh, a lot of the cars that you see in here, I put it to this page, obviously, because April's right around the corner and it's my favorite because of those awesome Honda legends over there, super clean. So thanks buddy for sending that out. And I look forward to displaying it. Uh, last but not least, you will not believe this thing. This is a working television set. It's called the Tiny TV 2. I don't know how I found this thing on social media. I think it was an Instagram ad or something, but I have videos on this thing. It's especially hard to film because <laughs> it barely, the screen is so small and the remote works. It has volume. This video doesn't really have much sound. It was filmed there's actually some footage that you'll see from today's episode, but that's my NSX, my friend Vlad's Integra. Uh, but check this out how, let me zoom back out. So the channel changer, you can also use the knobs up here for volume and channel too, but let me switch. I put a clip from The Shining on there. Uh, that's a video of my mom riding my scooter. A clip of my dad's radio control truck, my niece and her cat, <laughs> my other niece and her blue tongue. I mean, how there's mom dancing. Look at her. Unbelievable. Anyway, uh, it's called a tiny TV too. I was dying when I found this thing because I'm all into the like the you know miniatures and die casts and anything sort of scale model. So. Um, amazing little creation. It was less than 70 bucks shipped and I kind of had to have it. So anyway, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the episode and we'll see you again next time. Getting ready to head to a car show this afternoon. A friend of mine is going to stop by and be taking the NSX today. The first time it will leave the house probably in about six or eight weeks. Good to stretch its legs a bit. So I got a little special secret sauce here in this Integra Type S. This is the only one I've ever seen with a third seat in the middle. So Vlad is a very innovative person and he actually found someone who was willing to swap him the center piece and the lower piece uh, in exchange for the one that actually has an extra so and he ordered this belt here. So how cool is that? The, the only Integra Type S probably right now, at least in this area, that can haul five people and a very cool upgrade. Here we go to the Pavilion's car show. There's Vlad behind me in his Integra Type S. Just showed up to the Scottsdale Pavilion's car show here and did not know that there were other NSX owners coming. So that's kind of a, ooh, performance upgrades. That was kind of a happy accident, but these are super clean. Here's a 91 with some performance mods. We've got the Borg Warner turbocharger, E85 fuel conversion, uh, conversion, science of speed, twin carbon clutch, tuned by UMS tuning, very sweet car. And then the one next to it looks a little more stock. That windshield is 
pitch black. That is a nice, stealthy look. I love the factory uh, nose mask, 16, 17 inch staggered chrome wheels. And uh, then I'll be over here representing the bone stock crowd in my 92 with 120,000 miles. And then next to Vlad with his Type S. So he's a multi, multi former Honda and current Honda Acura owner. Uh, this is his latest acquisition with 220 miles on it. His Integra has a clear protective paint film on it uh, that is matte finish. So you can't really get a good feel for that on camera, but it's a neat effect. And believe it or not, he's running a set of wheels from a Civic Type R with NSX center caps for uh, Acura badges. And then he added these, which are off, I want to say NSX as well, in place of the other sort of actually 3D emblem. So some subtle touches that he's done to this car, but uh, not too far off from its original stock configuration. And only a couple hundred miles on it. He's got a long way left to go with this one. We'll get a closer look at Vlad's car. He's got the, the two-tone interior now one other upgrade i forgot to tell you about is he did add instead of the perforated steering wheel he has the heated uh full leather wheel so subtle upgrade yet again oh yeah and the shift knob so i want to say that's a civic type r uh feature that he added as well as the he's got the carbon fiber overlay here but sweet ride for sure yeah take care And guess what I brought? Brought the moto just for fun. Totally beautiful day to be out here enjoying the scenery. And our car show season is very much in full swing here right now until probably May or June, but uh, we take advantage of it. Matter of fact, next week, I'll probably have some additional video content. I'm attending another one of the Kyusha Club events. It's a, a Japanese and European, basically pre 2000s car type of car show. So right up my, right up my alley, but more to come on that. I'm gonna cruise around here on my little scooter here a little bit longer today and enjoy the day. Some friends of mine just bought this absolutely stunning Jag. It is the epitome of British motoring right up to the hood ornament. Let's get a closer look. 390 horsepower, 4.2 liter, and he's wearing the right color for the weekend because it is St. Patty's Day weekend. Jasper, absolutely stunning XJR. How many miles on it? 121. 121, but it looks like, yeah, a 20 year old car, but does not look its age. And if I remember correctly, the wheels are off a later model Jag, right? Yeah, 2018 uh, XF Sport Brake. But they fill out the wheel wells nicely. They look they both totally, on. They yeah. Have the same offset and uh, same width. Uh, just a nice larger diameter. Totally proper look on this. Generous wood grain trim. How is the leather so nice? Twenty. Where was this car from? It was from Utah. Wow. <laughs> I just had an idea. So they started a while back putting these signs up that say 87 and older because they kind of wanted to preserve this back section is more so the really more vintage cars like you see here. But I think I'm gonna show up in my 86 Legend. <laughs> just kind of see what reactions I get. Park it next to a Camaro or something. And then if anybody questions me, I can show them my proof of registration that it's eligible to be down here. So I'll let you know how that goes.
kind of a example of the diversity of the show. We've got a McLaren parked next to a 57 Bel Air. Both amazing cars in their own way. All right, guys, I gotta show you this thing. So every time I come by this area, I verify this car has not moved. This is a 90, I can't remember, 94 or 95 uh, Champagne automatic LS Coupe, but it has been sitting at this repair shop for at least three years. And I've contacted the owner of the shop multiple times. Unfortunately, he's not eager to get rid of the car. Um, I think it was uh, basically a situation where the owner passed away, left it in his will, and um, there's some issue with the title. So the, t the plates expired in 2018 um, in Pennsylvania. So clearly this car has not seen the road in, well, that's six years ago. So <laughs> I have no idea when it last drove. I ran the Carfax on the car and everything looked pretty good. It was obviously Pennsylvania owned, but just crazy to see this thing deteriorate here. I wish I had better luck getting through to this guy and letting him at least let it go to the, someone in the community to restore or, you know, worst case scenario, it's an incredible parts car. You can tell somebody at one point took some pride in it because it's got refinished wheels and Michelin tires. But uh, yeah, there you go. Potential project if I can ever get any success with uh, communicating with this guy that runs the shop.